Hello, I'm Ansar Ju. I'm Jimin Park. Today, we are going to introduce things about Schrodinger's equation. Before knowing about Schrodinger's equation, we have to understand about quantum mechanics. So what is quantum mechanics? The quantum mechanic is, according to quantum mechanics, events that occur in microscopic worlds that can be only be calculated probabilistically until they are observed and that there are possible states of coexistence. So the famous example is Schrodinger's cats. Ever been your heart? So this experiment is, we put cat and poison in the box, and in the box there are 50% of die or lie. So if we wouldn't look at in the box, we can know cat is die or lie. So we call this state, death and life are overlapped. So this is very important clue to connect macro world and micro world. Uh, so now we have to introduce or Schrodinger's equation. Schrodinger's equation refers to the energy state of a quantum such as an electron expressed as a wave function when treated as a wave. So now we are going to in this moment. So before explaining Schrodinger's equation, we have to know three pre three preconditions. Exponential function. When we, between, when we differentiate or integral this function, we can get the same result with original function, so we can ca calculate function easily. Second, Euler's formula makes trigonometric function and exponential functions cal calculate simple. And thirdly, wave function can be expressed in this way. Now, I'm going to explain inducement of Schrodinger's equation. First of all, we need to understand the momentum and energy of photons before to start the derivation process. As you learn in the curriculum, the momentum and energy of photons can be expressed in this way. And as we've just explained, the wave function can be expressed with trigonometric function and E. If we differentiate this function with t and x, we can get this equation and we can multiply this value to make it easier to organize them. And finally, we end up with this formula. Now we'll transform the momentum and energy of the photon that we obtain. What we can see here is that momentum and energy can be correspond to this equation respectively. On the other hand, energy can be expressed as the sum of kinetic energy and, and potential energy and can be expressed using momentum in this way. If you substitute the corresponding value of momentum and energy in, into this equation, you, you can organize it like this. In other words, this value is the total mechanical energy, which is called the Hamiltonian in terms of another operator. From this expression, we can multiply directly by Poisson in both sides and let it appear as follows. Now, if we come back, to, come back and summarize the K and W of the wave function in terms of momentum and energy, you can get the following equation. And we can differentiate this function one time for T and two times for X. And then we rearrange E as follows. Finally, if we summarize the, all the formulas we have obtained before, we conclude that E psi equals to Hamiltonian psi.
we know that Schrodinger equation explains the wave of particles, right? Okay, from now on, I will talk about equations physical meaning. First of all, we need to know that the square of a wave function means the probability of finding an electron. Please take a look at this graph. This graph's x-axis means the distance from the center of the hydrogen atom, and y-axis is the square of the wave function, that is, the probability of finding an electron. The graph on a hydrogen atom's 1s orbital is drawn like this. It means the probability density is highest in the center. And on 2s orbital, the probability density is highest in the center, and zero part appears and exists again. Based on this graph, an electron cloud could be drawn like this. Uh, we can think about Schrodinger's equation for the hydrogen atom that has one atomic nucleus and its solution. First, we have to put potential energy of electrons in the hydrogen atoms into equation. And we can express the solution with multiplication of function for distance r and function for angle theta and pi. This function looks like this. Next, what is quantum numbers and what does each mean? Principal quantum number we call n indicates the discontinuous energy value of the electrons in the atom. Also, the movable quantum number we call L determines the angular momentum of an electron and that determines the shape of the orbital. Last, magnetic quantum number we call M is the axis component of angular momentum. As variable MLM change, the probability density function changes. Finally, we can see how the orbital model was derived. Um, next, next, I'm going to introduce the Schrodinger equation applied to modern physics. Uh, originally, Schrodinger equation is a prior equation like Newton's equation. However, based on the history of physics, it can be inferred when a particle has a property of a wave, there will be wave equations that occupy it. If a particle with a mass of m moves in one dimension under the influence of, influence of positive energy Vx, Schrodinger equa equation follow this expression. So we have Schrodinger equation matched with its dimension. We have one dimensions, second dimensions, and third dimensions. Next, there are three conditions that a wave function should have. First, function should must be finite. So this say that the function should not be disconnected. Second, the function has a single value. That is no more than one wave function and equal to one value of x. Third, the wave function must be continuous for all regions. It should not be disconnected. The value of the wave function must also be continuous. No place where the slope changes continuously. When the graph is clear, like this picture, the slope of the point changes continuously. For free-moving particles, the Broglie relationship can be derived from the Schrodinger's equation, and it is possible to particles. Uh, it is possible to express kinetic energy equation for existing particle zero momentum. Because these two equations are semantically complete consistent, we can derive the Broglie relational ex expressions. Thank you for listening to our presentation.